Good morning, Wednesday morning. Oh, I can hear a wee aeroplane up ahead. Distracted me there. Hope everyone is well. <coughs> the wee lagoon. Morning, Nadia. Hope you're well. Wave. There we go. What is it? Morning, Wally. <laughs> Morning, Nadia. Aye. I, I, um, I just... What? What is it? What? What? Hope you're well. Good morning. Go slow morning this morning. Right, uh, this morning, um, well, I originally, as Nadia pointed out, I came on and then came back off again. And um, let me think. What way will I go? Let's go this way. Um, so I, Nadia, quite rightly pointed out, I disappeared. I called this morning, um, celebrating the day as much as the month. And I don't know what I then changed it to. Enjoying the learning as much as the goal. So yesterday, um, a lady had asked me to talk a little bit about post-traumatic stress. I never quite went into it as much as trauma. But just a, an on-site onto that. Then after doing that, it got my head thinking and got me thinking about stuff that I hadn't thought about for a long time, so that was good. But in the fellowship, we um, we celebrate one day at a time. So if we can get through a day, and sometimes genuinely, there's been points where you do it in increments of 10 minutes. If you can just be without a drink and sit with the thoughts and the hunger, you know, you break your hour up into 10 minutes, you break your day up into hours, you get to get through a day, it's one day at a time in the fellowship. And why I love the fellowship so much is because back, you know, 85 years ago, I always say 100 years ago just because I'm lazy, but 85 years ago they developed a programme that neuroscientifically with each step, right, each incremental step has such powerful scientific meaning I cannot emphasize that enough and I say this repeatedly if you have heard anybody new age telling you that the 12 step process that they can narrow it down to one step please delete them they have not got a clue and there is a few of those new age spiritual gurus that think they've got the answer and there is a reason why we have to it's called stacking so even in even when you're taking se certain supplements right we have to stack them right you're taking certain medication certain medication is a singular pharmaceutical whereas other medications they have to be stacked in order for them to work effectively. The 12 step process is a stacking process, right? And I will go head to head with the people that say the 12 step process can be diluted into one step because it's absolute nonsense. Now, why am I talking about that? Because it's celebrating, celebrating, it's learning, learning to celebrate the small steps rather than the main goal okay so for an example you're going to run a you're going to run a marathon you want to run a marathon that's your goal when you're on the marathon there's a sense of achievement that sense of achievement gives you a chemical called dopamine okay dopamine is an evolutionary process that has been around since time began it's a very primordial um, um it's a very primordial neurochemical which prompts us to action. It's what got us to survive, right? I'll take a wee couple of minutes here and sit in this tree, right? So, 
yesterday I was what got me thinking was about the amygdala and the amygdala deep being on high alert, right? Now, the amygdala in the brain, so if you were to put um, crochet needles through your eyes, a crochet needle through your ear, where they meet, that we've got these two almond shaped uh, things called the amygdala in the brain, right? Now, that's our fear response, that's like our gateway for processing information, right? Now, uh, what you hear a lot about as well is fight, flight, or freeze, right? But there's also other parts re re that's tied into that reward system in the brain, which is about moving forward. So, when you are caught in a loop of negative thinking, when you're caught in a loop of debilitating stress or anxiety, now, anxiety and stress is part of our evolutionary process to get us to move forward, to get us moving, right? So it may seem counterintuitive, but when you're paralyzed with fear and you're paralyzed with anxiety, you have got a bunch of... Good morning. I can't read that because I've not got my reading glasses on, Liz. Um, old age comes to us all, right? So moving forward. So when we're debilitated with stress and anxiety, okay, actually fighting that so the resistance of suffering creates more suffering the resistance of the, the the feeling the anxiety actually is more problematic than leaning into it than using the anxiety so we have got a feeling the anxiety the anxiety is being created by a load of chemicals that's going through our body now we can either sit dormant with that and become paralyzed with fear around it or we can do something that feels very counterintuitive in the moment and that is actually to move forward with it. Now, moving forward, as I get up and start walking, I'll probably start making a bit more sense now that I'm moving into it, right? Learning to harness these neurochemicals that are inside us and becoming our own alchemist or whatever you want to call it is learning. It's a learning. Now, if you're caught in a feedback look of ne negativity all day and you're thinking negatively all day, right? I don't believe in positive thinking, like, let's replace that with a positive thought. How can you replace, how can you bring in, how can you fake it, fakely bring in a positive feeling when you're debilitated by stress and anxiety? But throughout that day, notice and hone in that some good thing, you may see something in your blackest moment that has some light around it, right? And when you see that thing, that's our opportunity to celebrate it, to see that good thing, okay, and to acknowledge it. It's acknowledging that creates a dopamine release. Now, as I said about the running the marathon, right? So running the marathon is a sense of achievement. You get a sense of dopamine after you've run the marathon. But how can you start to heart? How can you go from couch to marathon? So first step, put your running shoes at the front door, do that for a couple of days. Then put your running shoes on and go for a half walk, half jog around the block, right? And as you do each of these things, even taking your running shoes out of the cupboard and putting them by the front door is an achievement. Celebrate that. That's going to give you a dopamine release. That's you starting to manipulate your own um, neurocircuitry for your advantage. So, Leave your running shoes at the front door, look at the running shoes and see that as a celebration that you managed to get them through the cupboard to the front door. After a few days of doing that, put your running shoes on and start to go out for a walk, stroke, jog around the block. After you've done that, celebrate that. Start to celebrate the learning. Start to celebrate rather than uh, seeing that you'll only feel reward when you get to the end of the goal. Now, when we were walking the West Highland Way, as I said, the last stretch from Kinloch leaving to Fort William, it's called the Military Road. Um, you could probably see, I'm guessing, about six to eight miles into the distance. Cold, wet, water running out of our boots. Gordon and I looked at one another, we were like that, oh no, right? It just did not seem achievable. But when we broke that journey down into, well, there's a corner, and then there's another corner up there and then it goes over the hill and then I imagine it goes on for miles again. So 
Rather than looking straight ahead, we moved our peripheral vision, we moved our eyesight to only six feet in front of us, like the distance our shadow would have been if the sun was behind us. And we just started focusing six feet in front of us. And then we looked up and we got to the corner. We, we, we then celebrated that we'd got to that corner and that was an achievement and that gave us dopamine. We then saw the brow of the hill. We then looked six feet in front of us. We got to the brow of the hill. That was another achievement. So rather than celebrating the success of getting to cuddle the bronze star, at the end of the at the end of the high street in Fort William, we were then starting to incrementally um, acknowledge and celebrate each experience along the way of the journey. So, as the old saying goes, if you read these little positive thinking things, it's never about the destination; it's always about the journey. But it's how you start to harness that journey, how we start to harness that journey for our benefit. Now. If you have watched some of these vlogs, um, I was doing a vlog a little while ago about um, my uh, keen interest in watching America's Got Talent. It was back on again. And predominantly when you're watching these very young uh, singers, they're maybe 9 or 10 or 12, right? They're really young, they're very innocent, and they're very shy and they're talking away about what they do, right? And then... They get the mic and they start singing. So for the first few seconds of them singing, they're good, they're okay. And then what I noticed they started to do was they started to move about the stage. And as they started to move about the stage, it was almost like this spirit or reincarnation of Janis Joplin come through this 12-year-old. They turned into an absolute powerhouse. Their energy was absolutely incredible. Every hair in my body was standing in head and I'm completely fixated and mesmerised. That seems to be a common thread when I've been watching America's Got Talent. So what's that got to do with movement? Well, movement is about moving forward. So we as evolutionary animals have got a pre predisposition to move forward, right? So life's either happening to us or we're moving into it. We're learning to lean into it. Now, I know that this sounds really, really simplistic and when you're paralysed with anxiety, depression and fear and riddled with feelings of guilt and shame and all the rest of it, I completely get that, that you're totally paralysed. But when you're totally paralysed, your universe or your reality is very shrunken and very small. Now, as we can learn to move forward and move into it, we then start to create a completely new neuro neurochemistry within our brains. Right? A neurochemistry that's so powerful that if we can harness it, we can start to change our reality very, very quickly. Um, I know I'd be simplistic, but I kind of view this reality as some kind of virtual reality world. And we have at our fingertips a capacity in order to manipulate that world to work in our favour rather than against us. Life's not happening to us. We can now, now, Yes, you can have a crap day. I totally get that as well. And forgive me for being simplistic, but uh, I'm also working against the clock this morning and I've got a wee bit of that worrying going on. And I'm trying to get my point across as, as quick as I can. So dopamine. Dopamine, I, wrote, I, I spoke an article about dopamine being the false promise of reward a little while ago. Um, and, you know, uh, subjectively, we've got serotonin and oxytocin as well, which is a bonding chemical. Now, if you tie that in with an experience, like, for an example, walking with Gordon, right? So we look, we look way, way, way up into the distance, right? We look massively towards the distance and it seems overwhelming. We're never going to get there. It's as if it's never going to happen. Our goal is miles away. Right, And we will only be fulfilled when we get to that goal. So what happens if you don't get to that goal? What happens if that doesn't work? Then you feel like a failure and you don't get the dopamine reward. But if you actually start to change how you view it and you start to acknowledge and accept the process as you're moving towards that goal, it doesn't matter if you get to the end result because each incremental stage is, is an end result within itself. So going towards the West Highland way, I'm just giving you an examples and talking about me. Ties into my narcissistic nature, I suppose, but there you go. Um, as an example, our training towards the West Highland Way was incremental stages to get into the West Highland Way. The West Highland Way then happened in the way that it happened, right? So look at it through a microscope. Start to look through your life as a microscope and rather than, okay, when I get the job, I'll feel fulfilled. How about just filling in the application? How about just starting to look for jobs online, right? And then rewarding the fact that you spent a day online, right? Back to the fellowship, one day at a time. 
Sometimes, you know, 14 years of sobriety, right? 14 years of sobriety from alcohol didn't just happen. It was because I learned to reward each day in the early beginnings. You know, 90 meetings in 90 days, I got through 90 meetings. I then got through, you know, week to week. I then started to get through month to month. It then became year to year. But it started to, I remember there was a point in my life where I was actually sitting and just getting through 10 minutes at a time. I remember where I was sitting. I remember the chair that I was sitting in. And actually, that chair's been set in fire. I took it out of the back and set it fire after I got myself better and got myself well again, right? So you're sitting in that chair. You're doing 10 minutes at a time. You're getting through 10 minutes. You're getting through an hour. You get through a day. You start to value the day. You start to honour the day. And each time you do that and celebrate the fact you will have a dopamine, re a dopamine release, when you start to see that, you can then start to become an alchemist of your own neurochemistry. You can then start to create on tap dopamine when you want it and how you're going to access it okay so um this morning i could not be bothered this morning i'm heading off to go up and uh, climb a monroe right so i really wanted to leave the house at seven o'clock this morning and go and climb the monroe but i also value doing these vlogs um so i was in go slow had a coffee my routine's totally upset. My routine's completely upset because I normally leave the house a whole lot earlier and do the walkway a little bit differently, right? I'm kind of walking through, felt as if I was walking through quicksand as I was going towards the waterfall this morning and then got on the waterfall, got on line. Nadia said to me, as you noticed, I kind of changed it. I stopped it. I didn't feel very much like doing this this morning. Started walking, started moving, started attempting to get my point across. Um, am I doing it completely perfectly? Absolutely not. Am I a neuroscientist? Absolutely not, right? Um, but as I started moving towards it and I started walking and I started talking, I started moving forward. The past is now gone. That feeling that I'm not ready, that feeling that I'm not firing, I'm not wiring, I'm not moving has gone. So my point today is learning to fall in love, if you like, with the process rather than the goal, because it's not necessarily about the end result that we need to get the dopamine from. It's learning to manipulate our neurochemistry so that as we step along the way, each, in each incremental milestone can be acknowledged, accepted and rewarded in the fellowship, it's one day at a time. If you can start to learn the days, you'll start to stack the days. The days will become weeks, the weeks will become months, the months will become years, right? The 12 step process in the fellowship, take away the fellowship, take away Alcoholics Anonymous, take away Narcotics Anonymous. It is by far the best business model. As I said to somebody that's a, one of the guys I know uh, uh, or worked with, Kevin, a phenomenal guy, his knowledge and understanding the 12 step process is God in par with anybody that I've ever met. Right? And I remember saying to him, I said, the 12 step process is completely unutilised. And what do you mean? I said, well, I said it has. I have better. I have as good, if not better, results working with people with mental health issues using the twelve-step process than I ever have working with people in narcotics or alcohol issues. And he just looked at me like that. And went, I never thought about that, right? I says the twelve-step process can be utilised and implemented into any situation. Why? Because it's a fantastically clever tool. The people that were involved were way ahead of their time. Right, first point of call when you're starting anything is acceptance, and sometimes we need to accept we don't know the answers to everything. As Henry T. Ford was put up in court, now looking back, Henry T. Ford was probably autistic, Asperger's, maybe on the spectrum or something like that, and he was taken to court. He was taken to court by one of his employees. Let's say it was his managing director, right? And he was been taken up to court to try and get ousted out of his own business because he was incapable, right? So he's in court and the managing director or whatever gives him the slagging on the dock and the, the, the judge listens to it all, blah, blah, blah. And then Henry Ford gets to, gets put up in the dock and the judge says, how do you how do you feel about what you've just heard? Is any of that true? And he went, oh, aye, it's absolutely true. I'm completely incapable. I have got no idea on how to run a company. And the judge went, whoa. And he went, but that's why I employ the people to do the job that I can't do, right? So sometimes it's just accepting that there's certain things that you're not capable of doing. But when you can admit that and honour that and start to move in a team, now there is a circuitry in the brain for winning and losing. Why I'm saying that is winners win and losers lose, right? You ever thought about that? The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. 
That is completely neuroscientific and I am going to write a blog about that and then I would love to share that in a vlog. I'm going to write a blog, I would love to share it in a vlog about that, why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now, yes, it's circumstantial and yes, but what I mean is, what I definitely mean is why unhappy people seem to get unhappier and why happy people seem to get happier and happier. Why? Because there is actually a circuitry in the brain that rewards that and what is the thing, what is the thing that ignites it? movement moving forward fight flight or freeze movement right it's about learning when safe to face adversity and move towards the challenge it's so counterintuitive right and generally generally speaking in a lot of terms working with clients around about this stuff it's not necessarily so much about the person that they're going to meet that they're frightened of or the situation that they're frightened of it's actually buys back to themselves so for an example if they were meeting a hostile situation like we'd say that then the external situation was hostile or confrontational they're less frightened of the confrontation they're more frightened of their reaction to the confrontation right or the success success is frightening and dominating when you actually start to boil it down and you start to strip the layers away and working with clients over a three or four six week process with them what you start to find is that they're less scared of the of the success they are more scared of their reaction to the success what might i do if i am successful right but as long as you stay paralysed and stuck, you're never actually going to know what it's like to get there. And sometimes, and what we've learned and what we're doing with Scouting About, and the team that we're working with, and the guys that we're working with are equally, and if so, more qualified than I am in certain levels, sometimes what you just need is somebody to push you over the finish line. You don't necessarily have to get yourself over the finish line. You just have to have people because you can get put into the illusion of winning. Sometimes you just need to know that somebody's there that's going to help you to get across the winning line. And when you can start to um, consolidate that and start to hardwire those experiences for success and winning and um, dopamine fundamentally, it's not necessarily about winning and success. These are just terminologies that we use. It's fundamentally about starting to learn how to take ownership of your own reality, take charge of your own narrative and create the world and life that you want to live rather than life happening to you. And each one of us, no matter of social setting and understanding, poverty or richness, can actually start to rewire their brain for better experiences, right? Fact. But it's starting to take charge of it. It's starting to think outside. It's starting to look at our metacognition. It's starting to look at what is it that we need? What is it that we need to do? Who is it that we need? And how do we need to get there? And am I willing to start moving myself forward even in the face of adversity? Even when it feels like I don't want to move and I don't want to get up and I don't want to do it. We are pre-programmed to move forward. We walk forward for a reason. We have lateral vision for a reason, right? Okay, it's all set up evolutionary wise we're millions of years into evolution we're a completely um, unique and very complex set of structures and what we need to do is we need to learn how to harness this vehicle you're not going to take a Ferrari to a Skoda garage for an MOT and a service are you right you're not going to take your Ferrari down to a back street garage and pay somebody six pound an hour to look at your Ferrari Enzo are you no you're going to take it into a nice tiled all perception it's all about perception and it's how we start to take care of this very very complex machine for the better and the thing that we would like to, the thing that people would like to think we are is that we are powerless and all our power is given away to an authority or somebody bigger better or better than ourselves that is strictly not true we are very very clever and we can understand very complex theories if only they were delivered to us in a way that we can understand and we can start to take charge of our own new chemistry we can start to take charge of those sorry i got sidetracked and it's really important to say this so we were all in separate little bundles as we were walking the west highland way right so and sometimes i'm solo right i've learned that about my hiking over the years that um um i get i get i get a different set of complexities by walking alone right um sometimes i like to walk with other people but sometimes in order to get what i need to get i need to be solo right but that's cool we're walking along so it's gordon and i for an example right and we're doing these incremental steps right and sometimes you're at the front sometimes you're at the back sometimes you're you're a good hundred meters behind people sometimes you're a hundred meters in front of people right it just is what it is and you're going through that experience of incremental challenges along the way and getting those feelings of dopamine along the way right now 
this is a crucial part. Dopamine is about moving us forward, okay? But then we've got serotonin and oxytocin, which is good for how we learn to bond and experience things together. Now, when we all went over the finish line, we all went over the finish line together. We all hugged each other together. We all got our picture taken together. So the different chemical other than dopamine at that point when we were together was oxytocin and serotonin. When the oxytocin and the serotonin were starting to lift up, that started to consolidate the experience and create new, better and more meaningful memories, right? That's what I would encourage you to look at. I wish you all the very best. Have a fantastic day. Sorry it's been quick. I'm off to climb a Monroe and um, I'm off to be 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 Ben Vorlick. So have a great day. Um, if the weather's fine and you can see something from up there, I'll do a wee live to let you see the lovely, spectacular scenery of Scotland. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much. Hope that made sense. Made sense to me and my head. Right, have a good one.